Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for watching. My name is Wes and this is the Universal Life Church of Massachusetts. Um, if things sound a little bit different today, it's because I have a new microphone. I'm using the Blue Yeti microphone. And I've done uh, some tests, and I think it sounds uh, pretty good right about here. So we're going to go with it. Uh, you can let me know what you think. And uh, as usual, our show is sponsored by the Hip Bee. The Hip uh, provides honey uh, it, uh, and other honey products. And that is T H E, the Hip, H I P. And B E E, the hipbee.com. I'll put a link down in the description. Also, I'd like to mention uh, the Hipbee Explorer YouTube page. Um, they, it is a new page, um, and I'm over there because uh, I'm a beekeeper as well. Um, but on the Hippie Explorer, we explore New England and we do a little bit of everything. Some prospecting and some exploring around New England. Um, I'm, go give, check it out. Go give it a look. See what uh, you think. Uh, there was a video put up this week. Uh, we in, did a, had a tour of uh, the Public Health Museum and the Insane Asylum over in Tewksbury, Massachusetts at the Tewksbury State Hospital, and uh, that's kind of creepy and interesting. So check out the Hippie Explorer. Just do a search. I'll put a link down in the uh, description box of this video as well. Now, this week's topic comes to us uh, from a listener... Uh, and viewer, and uh, if you have a topic and you'd like to uh, suggest a topic, if I use it, I'll give you a shout out as well. So a shout out goes to Jay Lyon Layden. He is an author of the book The Unnamed Bear's Favor, which was uh, number one on Amazon's bestseller list for four weeks, and in the, and the young adult category and uh, I was lucky enough to get a copy of it and read it before it came out and it is a fun adventurous story uh, taking place in prehistoric times so I uh, so please check it out uh, that's the unnamed bears favor from J Lyon Layden and the topic he sent in this week is the flower of life and before I get into it I just want to say this that the uh, the most dangerous falsehood is the one that is wrapped in layers and layers of truth. Because some people look at one or two layers of the truth and then don't look any deeper to ever find the falsehood. And with that said, that gets us into the flower of life uh, because there is a lot of truth in the flower of life. But uh, if you look around the internet and information that has been spread over time, there is a lot of falsehood too. So I want to get into it because here on the Universal Life Church, we accept all religions because I believe all religions are at their core, at their origination, we're trying to achieve the same thing. Peace, happiness, and liberty for uh, everyone involved, and uh, in the esoteric parts of these religions, enlightenment, what it is. There's something going on more than the average people know, and uh, there's a different perspective, and there's more to the world than you realize. And the New Age has jumped onto the flower of life, and the New Age religion, I believe, is on a, a good path. It's the right path, um, but they sometimes get off of track and follow falsehoods. So let's look at the flower of life um, the, the, and what the claims are. Um, now, if you look online, you'll find a lot of information about the flower of life, but it all goes back to Drunvalo Melchizedek. He wrote the uh, Ancient History of the Flower of Life, I believe it was called, Drunvalo Melchizedek, and uh, he wasn't born that. He was, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know his real name, but he changed his name to that, um, and 
he wrote this book and it makes a lot of claims that you will see uh, if you read it or if you look at uh, there's plenty of videos online that use this same information it's been repeated over and over but just because something's repeated over and over doesn't mean it's true so let's get into what is and what isn't true about the flower of life um, first of all I'm going to explain what the flower of life is it's a it's just a pattern of overlapping circles that's all it is overlapping circles um, you can make it yourself using a compass a circle making device uh, you can set it to any size circle and make a circle on a page to start with one circle then put the pointer of the compass on the anywhere on the circle on the edge of the circle on the line you drew and make another circle and where the second circle intersects the line of the second circle intersects the line of the first circle you put the point of the compass on there and you draw another circle and you can keep continue doing that um, I'm going to put some pictures of the flower of life uh, up here I'll probably put them in stages so you can see how it is made and what it looks like and you continue the process of drawing these circles where the previous where the present circle intersects the previous circle you then put your pointer and make another circle until you have 19 circles uh, of course completing a series around the original circle before you continue the next series of circles. Um, and the first seven circles make uh, the seed of life, as it's called. Uh, that's one circle in the middle and six circles around it. you got the seven circles, and that's the seed of life. Um, and then it goes on from there, and there's different names for the different layers until you get to 19 circles that's called the flower of life now you've seen some pictures I put some up on the screen here of what it looks like and it's a pretty pattern and a create and that's what it is it's a pattern you create you're creating a pattern of evenly spaced circles um, and there are many different patterns in this world and this is one of them and because you're working with circles and they're evenly spaced, um, this pattern creates the, if you connect each circle with the center of the other circles, uh, you can create a, a cube. And all the platonic solids, if you continue on creating circles, even beyond the flower of life, um, the claim is that you can connect the circles to make the platonic solids, uh, the five platonic solids. And those platonic solids are representative of, because all the elements on the periodical chart of elements are either a earth, fire, water, gas, or ether. And... I guess the claim is because of that then all the periodical elements uh, are represented in the flower of life well that's a broad statement that's one of the statements that are made out there to to uh, explain that the flower of life is a blueprint of the universe as they say um, but that's a reach um, Another falsehood you'll hear out there is that the Fibonacci sequence, uh, which is often represented as a spiral, is also in the flower of life, and it holds that secret to, well, it doesn't. Just plain and simply, the math doesn't work out, and it doesn't. They say that all of languages are in there, and it's just that's just a falsehood, too. People are reading into this more than what's actually there. We have overlapping circles, evenly spaced, and within that there is some amazing things because of the, uh, you can create the platonic solids, which are 
shapes that all have the evenly even sides um, and they fit within a circle and well you're working with circles so it's really not that big of a surprise um, but another thing is you'll hear that the flower of life was drawn on the temple of Osiris meaning that 2500 years ago the Egyptians or more than that uh, closer to 5000 years ago because the Egyptians were like 2500 years before Christ and we're at uh, 2020 so there's 4500 years that's about when the Egyptians uh, ended and there is a uh, inscription in the temple of Osiris of the flower of life and they take this as proof that uh, you know this was the Egyptians uh, were also uh, creating this sacred symbol and pattern of the universe um, but that's not you know I don't believe anything I just go by the evidence and um, it's either most likely true or most likely not true with me. I could be wrong. But um, on the Temple of Osiris, there was a docu uh, documentation done. Let me find her name here. Margaret Murray in uh, 1904 documented all of the Images and engravings in the Temple of Osiris, uh, even the things that uh, may have even been not done by the Egypt, uh, Egyptians, uh, which is called graffiti. If it's graffiti, if it's, uh, it wasn't done later on. And in 1904, the Flower of Life symbol was never documented. So this claim that the flower of life is on the temple of Osiris in Egypt um, may not be true because Margaret Murray documented everything and she didn't put it there she didn't mention it and there's no documentation that it was there so there's a good likelihood that it was made afterwards unless you believe Margaret Murray documented every other image and engraving in the whole temple of Osiris and she got them all except for that one. That just doesn't seem likely to me. Um, so the chances are it is just a modern graffiti that was done. And any other claims um, that uh, of uh, the flower of life symbol going back further when you look at these claims it's just not the flower of life it's a whole different different pattern of overlapping circles and there were many different uh, patterns of overlapping circles that make a different petaled flower in the middle um, but I think like mathematics um, the flower of life is the perfect way to do it whereas um, there were other patterns that didn't uh, come out with the platonic solids when you were done um, so there is some sacredness and divineness to this pattern um, but as far as it being ancient and a um, knowledge that comes from a earlier civilization well let's take a look at that because that's another claim um, the Egyptians were amazing people and they were an advanced civilization uh, some of the things they did we can't even do today or at least it would be very difficult in some a lot of ways they were much more intelligent at doing things and constructing things than uh, 
we are or were in the past. And it seems like that technology popped up out of nowhere. Um, and then it moved into the Romans. The Romans took over a lot of that and progressed it. And they made some fantastic structures. Uh, this is the time of uh, when uh, the Roman Catholic Church and that uh, religion came about. And this is the time that the flower of life started really um, being present in society uh, because there are uh, engravings in Rome of the flower of life. And... <coughs> I think it was created about that time, and uh, over time, um, it got picked up by uh, Dronvalo Melchizedek, who read into it more than what was actually in there. Um, the Fibonacci sequence is not in the Flower of Life. It just isn't in there. Um, so that's just an outright lie. You can draw it differently so that it is, but it's not in the flower of life. Um, the Baromian ring, which is also uh, in Islam, is a, uh, and, and it's not in Islam, but uh, the Islam Gura, G-I-R-I-H, is also overlapping circles. Uh, different religions, uh, Celtic uh, images, the Baromian ring, uh, has that same overlapping rings, but only three of them. So, these symbols have been used to represent um, patterns and um, to really understand it is to draw it yourself and see what these patterns are. Because the uh, pattern, there are a lot of patterns in our world. And if you understand them, it helps you understand the world a little better. And when you understand the patterns and sequences that are in our world, uh, you can, it allows you to understand things that you may not have ever understood unless you understood the patterns. And another example of that is the dualistic world we live in, understanding that there are two sides to everything, an up, a down, a left, a right. We live in a dualistic world. And that allows us to understand that uh, there are two sides to everything, a good and an evil, and a stop and a go. So... Sometimes even emotions have opposites, and when you understand that and you start looking at your emotions, uh, you f try to find the opposite. What is the opposite of love? A lot of people will say, "Fe uh, hate, love and hate." No, it's not. It's love and fear. Fear is the opposite of love. Love is fearless. Because you can't have hate without the fear first. So that gives uh, the opposite of love. And these are the kinds of things that the flower of life presents to us and shows us that there are patterns in this world. So it may not be the blueprint of the universe, but it gives us a hint into um, the patterns that... Um, create our world and the circle and the line the straight line and the curved line are uh, can create uh, images like the circle which is unique in itself in its perfection and by using circles you can create the cube uh, those first six circles uh, 
create like a if you connect them it creates a 3d cube and it's also uh, the way our cells form um, the way cells duplicate so it there is some divineness to this image but it's not everything that uh, is uh, it's said to be by a lot of what you hear online uh, which comes from Dronvalo Melchizedek. Um, the first um, overlapping circles uh, was the 7th BC. So that's well after the Egyptians. This is the first time we've seen a history and documented the flower of life or they call it overlapping circles design is uh seventh century bc and it's and another claim is that the flower of life is called the flower of life all over the world they all call it the same thing isn't that amazing well that's false because it's also called the sun of the alps and many other names um and now those appeared uh, in the 17th and 18th century AD. And like I said, it was used in Rome very uh, frequently. Um, so somewhere along that time, uh, in between uh, the uh, 7th century BC, that's well after the Egyptians, uh, and, and that's around the time of the Romans um, as they were building up. So... That was a, an Enlightenment era. The knowledge of the Egyptians was kind of passed on to the Romans, and uh, from then it proceeded. And there's a lot of knowledge that came out of Egypt, and um, it, it's a very curious time because it's like uh, the Egyptians popped up with this knowledge out of nowhere, and then civilization used it in a kind of primitive way like it was a little bit early for them to have this knowledge but uh it's very interesting and and uh, that's why i found the uh, the flower of life a very interesting topic uh, i first heard about it about six or seven years ago i started looking into it and reading the different books and uh, watching videos, and uh, I had to do a lot of research myself. So that's what I suggest you do. You uh, look into it yourself and uh, find out what uh, is true and what isn't true about it because some wild claims are made, and uh, it may, all, may not all be true. So I thank you for watching. And uh, please hit subscribe, um, make a comment, hit a like, it helps my video, and until next time, peace.